um, so the, the, the program is, is very uh, expanded. So we are finishing an attempt to, um, to get the mechanisms of dissipation from, uh, from quantum system, releasing energy from, from quantum system. And we have built a foundations uh, which should result into the equation of motion for populations, which will give the detailed balance that we, we got uh, last night in the lab. Right. So the list of uh, stages to get into there, uh, we are going to borrow dissipative term from what we did uh, together by uh, stickers. Um, Assume additional properties uh, of the of the bus journey is uncorrelated and uh, define giving a little bit more details about how to perform the race operation. Um, then we are going to make uh, the procedure that uh, was promised long time ago to convert combinations of. Uh, uh, bus operators into number of quanta that later on will serve as a weights for for different uh, um, terms, different procedures in the um, in the equation of motion. You know, maybe I put in the chair here is a, is a serious thing. <laughs> um, um, then there will be a trick similar to what we did. In uh, time dependent perturbation theory, we will replace uh, infinite sum into integral and uh, get a sync function. And uh, then there will be a rate of relaxation, which will depend on, on temperature. So after this point, the rest will be more. Oh, Patricia, nice to see you. You have. Uh, uh, less ideas and more um, mechanistic work, same as we did uh, last time. So uh, up to up to this the first uh, nine steps, we will be dealing uh, only with one example of uh, of terms that um, we considered last time. So we've got uh, half of the chessboard like eight by four terms, then we uh, canceled half of them, right? So we uh, and we get about eight terms left. And uh, I will not look into records of the previous time and try to reproduce by memory from, from the nodes, but uh, it will be a continuity. So uh, for the like first half, maybe until break, I will take one term and approach it with all the details, and then assume that we have done the same procedure with the rest of the terms and combine them and, and analyze. So there will be um, a little note on uh, um, cycle of permutation and deciding which of the terms which uh, will get terms corresponding to uh, energy release and energy absorption. And then there will be several um, additional steps. So there will be short hand, short hand uh, form of this equation of motion for uh, density operator that has lesser number of terms but more commutators. It is easier for memorization, and uh, for now, for for us, it is not as important. But people who do it every day, they may want to, to memorize it. And then uh, from the operators, we will uh, uh, convert into matrix elements. So upon converting into the matrix uh, elements, we will arrive to equations of motions for populations of the of this two-level system, ground and excited state, with all uh, with maximum numbers of bells and whistles. And after uh, getting into matrix element, we can trace population dynamics, look into the limits, analyze steady state, and uh, hopefully prove that the effort that we are doing today will lead us to the detailed balance. And uh, upon com com I hope you will arrive to the stage and then the goals will be fulfilled. Okay? At least strategies uh, more or less understood. Okay.
So what do we have in the, um, as a result for, for the previous meeting? Previous meetings in, in plural. We are assuming we are considering that uh, two levels are coupled to several oscillators with different uh, frequencies, right? In 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 pairwise. We assume that each of the oscillators is in the um, thermal equilibrium, right? And then um, we, again, it's all assumptions, but we, we uh, did efforts to justify them, that uh, interaction between, between primary system of interest and path is B linear. So uh, interaction Hamiltonian includes on the first order uh, operators. And then, um, we have a reason to believe that first order uh, perturbation will drop in average over ensemble. So therefore, we include second order perturbation. And then uh, we express uh, equation of motion for, for the overall density matrix. And after this, uh, we, because it is untractable, uh, both numerically and, and by pen and paper, we refocus on so-called reduced density matrix that includes average over all states of the ensemble of this of, of this bus and as a res but uh, in amount of information it is equivalent for density matrix of isolated system and due to interaction uh, with the bus we anticipate additional terms in the equation of motion which will lead to uh, non conservation of energy in so to say globally energy is conserved but if you look on the on our selected system, it is released away from the system to the bus or is absorbed from the bus to the system, right? Okay, so um, all efforts that we do, well, you will be finished with the classes doing research and getting thesis all of you very soon, but in basically in our past, all uh, activities, uh, educational activities in, in the class deal with, uh, in some sense, it is translation between words, uh, observations in the lab, and math equations. And uh, everything we discussed in words uh, is more or less summarized in the equations there, or one can, uh, they are interchangeable. So uh, reduced density matrix for the system depends on the, uh, at time t, reduced density matrix of the system at time t prime, and it depends on the uh, system of the bus at uh, initial time. We already discussed that uh, uh, bus is in thermal equilibrium and it doesn't change over time, but you have the account of phase accumulation. Uh, we started by um, assuming that there was an initial time. Then through the waste of two class meetings each about two hours long we agreed that there will be eight terms of this uh of this curve so there will be total number of operators that affect the system is two and total number of operators that affect the, the bus is also two because it is a second order uh correction in the first order it is B linear. It is one operator from system, another from bus. If you use it twice, then there are two operators for uh, system, two for the bus, right? And then we can group them because they do not affect each other. We, we have them on, on the same hood and give a final term, but locally, the degrees of freedom of the system and degrees of freedom of the bus are different and they, mm, they commute. We can rearrange them under this in the same brackets to our pleasure because uh, sigma doesn't affect B or, or rho B and, and, and vice versa. So um, this term, I think it was in the third row and in the middle of the, of the big metrics that we 
made with big stickers, right? You don't need to remember. I, I don't remember. I just picked up one of the representative cases. Um, the um, buff operators come with dagger and no dagger. Um, system shooter spin operators also come with dagger no dagger because we already removed every, all suspicious terms. Typically, they are in the uh, opposite order plus and minus here, minus and plus there. Uh, just to double check. And um, since just based on the principles of, of perturbation theory, it is considered as system evolves from the initial time and then at instantaneously it changes its state and then it uh, changes state once again. So there are events of uh, interaction and events of uh, free propagation that accumulate phase. Due to this uh, phase accumulation, which is naturally coming from the perturbation theory, we have these red terms, uh, which do have subtraction of the frequency of the system and frequency of the bath mode. Um, and note that there are different, since uh, we treat the uh, independent all, all bath modes, we cannot say from the beginning that we will have bath modes from the from the uh, operators from the same bath mode. But for generality, there should be different indices. Are we okay with this term? More or less? Any complaints? Or okay. So. Um, I believe this is the discussion that uh, we had was, was inspired by a question uh, from London last uh, meeting, and I was writing it on the, at the bottom. So the density operator of the uh, bath is a, a product of um, independent density operators for for uh, some for infinite number of harmonic oscillators and each of them is in the in the thermal state So quantum system, quantum oscillator in the thermal state means that it is substantially in the uh, non-pure state, right? So all coherences uh, did equilibrate it to zero. And we have only diagonal terms. We do not have uh, M and N. The, the matrix is, is diagonal and the uh, diagonal elements are equal to um, both in distribution uh, divided by uh, partial partition function for uh, for the mode one, and the same is valid for for each of the modes. If the concept of density matrix is discussed in the statistical thermodynamics courses. Most of the time, one doesn't focus on non-equilibrium phenomenon and phenomenon and goes speaks only about equilibrium. And uh, some colleagues do have a, an opinion that it is the only equation of density matrix and not, nothing else can happen. 
So uh, you will see it in your career that if you speak about density metrics, some of your colleagues will tell, oh, sure, it is a diagonal matrix with Boltzmann distribution, nothing else. So in, in this uh, course, we go substantially away from it. But the, the bath, the reservoir, the thermostat indeed is in statistical uh, in the, uh, equilibrium and uh, follows this, this um, state. Oh, Adam, nice seeing you online connected. Okay, how do we formulate the uh, bath operator? Uh, trace, trace, um, before we go to the trace operators, I want to remind a little basic thing that uh, well if you would have more more uh, meetings i'm sure it's a limping like pirate chair <laughs> when it crashes uh, captain flint If we are merging statistics and quantum, how do the operators of creation and inhibition look like in, in metrics form? We don't have time to go to the board and practice it, but just uh, I expect you click something in your memory and um, say, oh, yeah, sure, I remember. Natosha, would you be able to? Okay. It is just what, what I wanted to hear. Max? Okay, excellent. So um, it should convert a quantum state M prime into quantum state M prime minus one and give the uh, factor square root of uh, M one and make uh, M prime and make summation of all uh, all states. Please correct me if I'm wrong, I, I, I'm champion in, in making errors. But um, get and Brad to represent operator and the, the factor. Yes? What is the K representing this? Uh, it represents different modes. Okay. Okay. I do not know where to put it here. Later on, when we will, um, the writing here is uh, a little substandard. If one would do everything explicitly and absolutely correct, mm -hmm. one would need to replace trace operator by explicit summation. Mm -hmm. And right now, because there is no explicit summation, we do not have coupling constants. When we couple our system to different uh, modes of the bus that appear that comes from the Hamiltonian, there should be coupling constant that does depend on the index of the of the mode. But uh, I don't have an idea how to introduce it all continuously. It's more fragmentary, and then the final picture will be more or less complete. Okay, uh, what do we change in the B dagger? We probably should use different index. Um, bra or M should change into M plus one, and it should be M plus one uh, square root. Hadassah, do you see any errors? Or is more or less okay? Okay, thank you. So, there was a pirate chair at many different times. Um, I need to put something in the space, so I, I will quickly rewrite it uh, here.
So how would we define the, the uh, trace operator? We do just we we'll put cheat sheet very close. So the, the chances for, for the error are, are uh, minimal. So race is a summation of diagonal elements of a matrix, right? So if we have a combined uh, operator, like several things, it means we assume that each of them are matrices. We multiply them row by column and for the resulting matrix we take the diagonal so let me try to express it for the uh, product of one operator and one matrix so if I do have um, matrix with indices g k operator with indices i j summation over the index that goes in the middle will create will correspond to a product of these two uh, matrices uh, with uh, indices i k okay No. So just uh, indices that are neighboring are performed summation over the first and last will be finally indices for the resulting matrix. Now we do need to pick the diagonal elements. It means we need to say that index i and index j k will be equal. So delta i k and uh, on recordings uh, everything except black you will be not seen i i try to watch our recordings uh and then i see myself and, and uh come in and uh, look here at this equation and uh on the recordings absolutely white blank so other colors are, are not, not seen okay so now we selected the diagonal of the matrix, and now we need to make a summation. So if you put summation over I, then it will be race uh, over operator B times operator row. Can we? generalize this expression towards uh, mm, multi-dimensional situation. We can, but even copy pasting it from, from the cheat sheet is a challenge with <laughs> this is uh, giving the right, the right explanations. So I'm going to uh, put something here. So we may need to uh, find trace over the uh, bus of um, of combination of several operators. It means that uh, there will be some summations and, and delta functions, but uh, under the argument, we will have the operators or matrices for uh, this D, 
K D K prime dagger, and then we do have a multi-dimensional product of everything we assumed as as our um, row for D for mode one, row B for mode K. row b for mode k prime and then one does need to have uh, the amount of summations and the amount of delta functions corresponding to to each pair of indices So there will be delta function and uh, pair of indices for each uh, of these things. And then there will be same uh, for um, for each of the elements of, of, the, of the density. But uh, those summations applied to the individual components of uh, uh, of the bath that haven't been affected by operators will be just a uh, summation of the uh, Boltzmann distribution and since they're normalized they will just give one so uh, fine the final result will involve only the terms uh, related to um, non zero modes that are being perturbed. There is one more thing that I'm, I'm going to, uh, to speak in a few seconds. Um, if we try to focus on the expectation value of the raising or lowering operator on its own or the thermal bath, it can be proved that the result will be zero. So um, we, it, it is not a very hard exercise, but uh, we will fail this time even without, without this, this exercise. Let me bring just a little um, verbal rationalization. Um, creation and annihilation operators for harmonic oscillator play a role similar to coherence operator as X and S Y for the spin. So expectation values of these operators uh, will be a measure of coherency. So if there is a coherent state that performs uh, noticeable evolution, then this expectation values will be non-zero. If the system is either in ground state or in thermal state, where there is center of the wave packet corresponding to oscillator doesn't perform any motion, then expectation values of this uh, single raising and lowering operator will be will be zero. Um, we need to stick in about 20 minutes proof. Or if this course is offered as a year long course, there would be a homework on this. Um, now, if we observe a necessity to find expectation value 
or product of, of two creation and annihilation operators. There are two situations. One situation, if the indices are not equal to each other, then since we do not have, we assume that there are no, there is no correlation. Each mode of the bus is standalone uh, in a thermal state. They do not, inter we do not care how they interact uh, to each other. They are in thermal state. And our, if we uh, track down interaction with mode uh, K and mo mode K prime, this will be equal to the uh, product of the expectation values of uh, resonant lowering operators for, for each mode. So zero times zero will be zero. But in the situation when these two indices are equal to each other, we can uh, remark it by putting delta function of uh, kk prime. And then it will be expectation value of product of creation and annihilation operators. This is something that will give non-zero result. And the result will be different depending on the order. What uh, where do we have dagger, first or second? So now uh, next uh, little part that uh, I'll try to do as quick as possible, but it will be also another option for great homework or in class exercise. So um, remember, Patricia approved, and no one else was protesting uh, for explicit form of the uh, of the of the operators, right? So they convert. Bra into cat, bra into cat. Here is plus, here is minus. And the summation that is attributed to uh, each of the operators, we can just put all summation signs uh, to the front. And uh, to represent the density uh, operator for a single for a given mode of bath or the indices coincide you can also put the summation to the front any objections at this step no 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 it's quantum state of the oscillator but to be to avoid or to be general, to avoid loss of generality, the indices should be different. We, we do not know if the indices will coincide. We need, uh, so um, the operators that we wrote on uh, there and discussed, it is a Dirac notation of the operators and they are replacements of a matrix. Right, so uh, this notation tells that it, uh, one of them will be uh, non-zero elements will be above diagonal, for another uh, it will be non-zero elements below diagonal, and they will progress from uh, top to the bottom as uh, like square root of two, square root of three, square root of uh, four. Right, so it is a shorthand notation for a matrix that represents uh, operator of uh, uh, creation and annihilation for, for harmonic oscillator. So mm -hmm. we have here is state, right? Is quantum state of a harmonic oscillator. And same here, right? So it is a, it is a matrix uh, which has only diagonal elements and uh, the, the lowest element is maximum. And as we get to higher N, this decays very quickly. They get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? So in some sense, in this exercise, we just multiply three matrices, um, three infinite matrices. 
and doing it explicitly is doable, but it would take too much space. So derocantation is only a way to, to save space in, in these operations. Okay, so um, I'm missing Adam in class because uh, he is the expert of uh, snakes and rabbits. So let's, you ask him to help from, from, from online, but uh, let's do a strategy. How can we simplify this expression? Let's maybe, can we focus on the class and do a little interview? If M prime is anything other than M plus one, what's going to say? Or is the camera to spy on you? Um, so in our summation, we've got the M prime bra that's going to meet with the M plus one ket. Mm -hmm. So if those two aren't equal, it's going to be mm -hmm. zero. So that can reduce it down to, it'll reduce two of the summations to one summation. It's no way to make everything zero, right? Mm -hmm. I said it's no way to make everything zero. Like if one of them, if everything is zero, it would be zero. Okay, so... Uh... Picking up on the one element for progression where, where the Brian cat meet each other, where, where they have the same index, right? Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Everyone agrees? No one wants to argue? Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Let's refocus back. So, M prime must be equal to uh, M plus one. Right? M prime must be equal to M plus one. If we, yeah, this, this will be not seen. I need to go. So if we admit, uh, this property, it means we can uh, remove this M prime, this bra, remove this cat. Instead of them, we can write delta M prime comma M plus one. And then it means we can uh, remove summation over M prime, remove uh, this uh, delta uh, over M prime M plus one, invite Adam to draw uh, snake and, and, and rabbit, right? And um, in the resulting expression, everywhere where we had M prime, we should replace it by M plus one, okay? So I'm going to use this space and try to rewrite this expression. So we still have summation over N. We have only summation over M. Uh, square root of M prime is replaced by square root of M plus one square root of um, m plus one from zero is reproduced. Then we have um, m prime minus one. We will be m minus one. No, we, we do replacement only for M prime. We need to decide which one. If you removed M prime here, then you should replace M prime everywhere there. You say the same. Huh? I was saying that if you put M plus one here, it's supposed to go with one of the summations too. So this one is migrated here. 
doing something different. That's okay. Would it say that this is an option? Yes, it is what I wanted to 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 to. But no, no, no. You can bra no bra and cat disappear, but cat and bra do not. So if you have bra and cat, they can go into one. But if you have cat and bra, it is an operator. You can uh, re remove them. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you. So what is next? Yeah, this one. M prime, which means M plus one. M plus one minus one will be M. Then we do not have this term. We moved all this one, and then we have M there. And the remaining is uh, n n e to the power minus h nu k n e t divided by q can we play this trick once again sorry okay so bra and cat it means uh, we should set that m equals n right we should uh, well basically it, it can be as a delta function m comma n and then we can remove the summation over m and replace each m to n Correct. So as a result, we will have summation over n only. Now we have square root of n plus one, square root of n plus one will be just n plus one. Uh, n, n. e to the power minus h bar kt and u k. When you were asking about k, so it appears here through the frequency, right? We do not perform summation, or it, it will affect the ratio between temperature and, and frequency. something i will not figure it out right now but uh there should be a way to get over to get rid of the summation as well and have uh summation only of n plus one times this boson factor that's i mean assuming that we're in an orthonormal basis that should just be the identity matrix right mm-hmm Yeah, because you're only going to get elements on the diagonal, and if they're all normalized, then that's just what's everywhere. So uh, I agree. I just see a gap in the formal uh, derivation. So probably I, I, by looking through the recordings of the meetings, I need to add self-found correction before putting it on the line. So some, by the way that I just not sharp enough to, to identify, you should get into summation over n and plus one, and then this Boltzmann factor. So, um, This will be two terms. One term is summation of n, 
with exponential factor of n, right? That will give uh, expectation value of number of quanta as function of new k and uh, new k and uh, temperature. And another one, if you perform summation with factor one, then uh, nominator will become equal to denominator. Since it is normalized, it will be just one upon summation. Can you believe this? Uh, say it again. <laughs> so the property of this uh, partition function or density operator of the uh, thermal state that it is normalized. So it is property summation over n e minus h bar u k k t n u k will be u k divided by q k. So definition of this denominator of partition function is exactly this summation. Yeah. Therefore, if you explicitly perform this summation, we will we, we'll get one. Therefore, from, from this one, we will get one here. And from uh, multiplying this distribution times n, we will get expected value of the number of quanta, which we may have uh, practiced in this class by about like eight meetings before to find this uh, result, one would want to replace um, one over kt as beta and then take derivative over beta. And then one, one would derive the, the explicit expression. So we derived it in this class about eight meetings before, and it was also derived uh, in chem 759 for black body radiation. But the number of quanta in the bath mode number k, the thermal equilibrium, is getting an additional contribution. It is number of quanta plus one, right? So we get this result if we have the um, anti-normal ordering of the operators. If the operators are uh, ordered indirect, then uh, uh, due to the Due to the commutation, you get only number of quanta. So if you put the dagger, if the, not V, if through our algebraic efforts, contributions from the bath operators come in the order of B dagger B, then it will be number of quanta in the mode period. If you have B B dagger, it will be N plus one. Um, if you have doubts or if it is not uh, either mathematical or chemical or physical, better express now this, well, I cannot say that it is the best and most important part of the course, but it is a vital part. So the rest of our today's meeting does depend on this property. So what is the expectation part of then coming in again? You start with some of the alternatives and plus one. So um, probably during the break, I'll try to figure out what is going on. The, the, in the final result, there should be no brass and cats. There should be only uh, value on the diagonal times n. And if one practices it, uh, there could be, there will be either number of quanta in the bath mode plus one, or just number of quanta in the bath with, without one. Are, are we saying that the, I guess the number of quanta expectation is the same thing as the sub order all in? 
So it's like you have stuff over in. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, we do have a distribution of uh, the the state number uh, zero, number one, number two have different probability, and if you multiply each of these probabilities by number of quanta, you'll find expected expected of, uh, expectation value of the number of quanta. Right. So any concerns uh, are better to express now rather than. Uh, and then just if I didn't explain it well or, or miss some some things, I'll try to improve. But does this thing sound reasonable? Can you believe it? Uh, do you believe in commutators? Okay, so it's basically a property. Depending on the on the order of, of operators, we will get either n or n plus one. And the equation for number of uh, quanta as function of the uh, frequency of the mode and temperature is this uh, Bose-Einstein distribution. So if we plug in the zero temperature, then it will be e to the power infinity, which will be infinity. Infinity minus one will be still infinity. One divided by, by infinity will be zero, right? If we put infinite temperature, then it will be e uh, uh, any frequency divided by infinity will be zero. E to the power zero will be one. One minus one is infinity. One divided by infinity will be Zero. Yes, one minus one is zero, and one divided by zero is infinity. Right. Yeah. And here is something in, in between, like approximately one half, but whatever one can one can do the math, right? So the higher the temperature, the more quanta uh, are in the uh, expected to be to be in the in the mode. Um, this number of quanta is. Uh, Different from eigenstates and from coherent states. So there are at least three. Well, in, in fact, there are, there are more, but at least three uh, situations to mention when quantum state of harmonic oscillator can give the same number of quanta n. So, first, if the system is in the eigenstate number n, then number of quanta number of excitations will be one two three four n right eigenstate another uh, there could be a coherent state with amplitude of square root of n uh, oscillating forwards and backwards and then uh, number of quanta in, in coherent state can also be equal to n but here it is neither eigenstate nor coherent state it is a thermal state where there is a diagonal distribution of, of, of all states together. And it is what, what comes up uh, if the system is in a thermal equilibrium. But uh, for our practical purposes, we, the number of quanta in the equilibrated uh, quantum mode is a sufficient information that, uh, that explain us in the influence of this quantized thermalized mode onto other system, onto our electronic states. Okay. So let's uh, check how far we are in the, in our progress. Not very far, but I, I think it's, it's better to do, to do a break. So uh, we are, about 25% through. So I need to, to really speed up. So we get from one to four and we need to arrive to 19. But let's, let's do about five minutes break and then uh, speed up with 
much higher pace. I'll, I'll try my best. Um, we place our system on a thermostat or stove, and the density is is a measure of the stove. Oh, how how hot it is! So, uh, alternative ways way to to account for the buff would be to represent it by a classical random noise. And we did it. And we saw that classical random noise doesn't give detailed balance. It will arrive everything to limit of the infinite temperature. If we, maybe, well, there are additional methods, but uh, this one is most developed. And I don't yeah, know with this one. So it, it is just one of the ways to uh, to bring our uh, electronic system to to thermal equilibrium that obey detailed balance. Uh, without quantum bath, without uh, density matrix of the of the quantized bath, we cannot we, we, we cannot get it, or it will be dramatically different uh, theory, which I promise will not be easier. Creation, and, oh, this one, uh, annihilation, and if, if it has a little plus, then creation. But Trisha did practice it a, a lot when she was auditing undergraduate class. She, she should be able to, to tell a lot about it. Yes. Yeah. Do uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, absolutely. This is the last class, and then we have presentation. That's it. Um, 
over from line that's changing that's changing zero zero one to the share. Uh, I know. I know I have to rename again the stuff I know I hear in but I think you also need to Oh, uh, well, we're waiting for Max, right? Okay, well, maybe Max will watch watching the recordings. I'll, I'll try to go from 5 to 19 in 50 minutes as, as much as, uh, as possible. So <clears throat> here is the expression we started from, right? So uh, we, it is one out of eight terms. We'll have a few more of those nature, but each of them has system part, bath part, and phase accumulation. The trace integration over time and notice that here is time t here is time t prime to it is a non-local equation that uh, is very cool for mathematicians but very unpractical for numerical solutions there should be differential equations that local in time uh, we agreed through about an hour discussion and it was still incomplete that by applying a uh, trace over over the bus uh, we will have non-zero contributions only if the indices k k prime coincide which is shown by this delta k k prime you didn't miss anything i just started and we uh, get the number of quanta in the mode number k which does depend on on temperature as bosenstein distribution the uh, time accumulation factor is the same it's difference between uh energy or frequency of the of the electronic system and frequency of the bath mode uh, which accumulates phase forwards and backwards with with time t and t prime right the uh by going from first line to second line i did escaped the abstract symbol of trace over infinite bath instead we have removed uh, those modes that didn't contain
sound sound of a okay just keep going okay so uh modes of the bus are different by the frequencies and by the coupling constant to to the uh, to the system what we have here is very similar to the Fermi's golden rule, right? And um, right now we want to do the following operation that we, we may not, uh, well, when I see a lot of equations, my mind is uh, petrified and I do not analyze things physically. Well, not, not always, not about, maybe not about me, but it, it is, like standard situation. So what do we have behind this equation? We do have one two-level system that is interacting with a lot of the uh, bus degrees of freedom. Each of the bus degrees of freedom is um, admit.com. Each of the bus degrees of freedom uh, contributes to a, a term to the uh, dynamics of the, okay, it is muted. Each, uh, each of the bus modes, especially if we replace summation and integration right here, which we always can do, T, I, T, D, T prime. So each bus mode contributes a term into the evolution of the, of the system. And now, instead of explicitly summation and adding contributions from each term of the, from each harmonic oscillator of the bus, we want to extract an average term, account for activity, for contributions of all bus modes together. Okay? Um, we expect to have something much simpler than, than we have now. Um, specifically, right now, I'm, I'm going over the same idea again, but it is, it is important. Right now, we account uh, infinite bus, like here infinity is, is equal three, but it is much more. And each of the bus modes have different frequencies. Due to the operations that we are going to commit right now, we will have a selectivity. We will find out that only those bus modes that are very close by frequency to the frequency of the transition for the electronic system will contribute to its evolution. And the selectivity will come from the integrating of this oscillatory exponential. If you perform integration over time, the frequency will come into the denominator and it will be frequency selective term. Okay. Um, I did lie a little bit. Uh, instead of performing integral over, over time, we'll do first summation over the bus modes. But um, I'm going to replace summation with integration. So summation over all bus modes will be replaced to integral in the independent uh, variable that will count in, 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 in the limit that both modes are have very dense spectrum they they are a uh, large number of both modes have slightly different frequencies so we can use as a, our integration variable omega minus nu k so detuning offset will be our mm, variable also by creating this derivation, which I'm not an author of. I just borrowed it from uh, sources. But authors of this derivation already knew that result will be frequency selective. So only those uh, 
modes that are in resonance will contribute. And there is a little trick. So one uh, performs integration not from uh, plus to minus infinity, but uh, one does assume that all modes substantially away from zero will have zero contribution. So one makes from minus delta to plus delta, which shows just a little offset between um, our frequency of the two-level system and the new k uh, of the of the bath mode so this little offset between black and green line is uh, our parameter delta that is uh, integration variable okay then we need some microscopic property of this bath when we were exploring black body radiation we did use density of uh, bath of the of the of the photon modes and we took it from assuming that um, the whole world is a big cubic cavity and one has electromagnetic waves uh, filled there as as particles in the box so and from this model one extracted the density of photon modes which uh, was like raising as uh, um, frequency squared something like this right now we do not know what will be the density of modes we want to be general and our buff can be represented by oscillations of uh, nuclear modes in a specific structure or in a molecule where the vibrational modes are experimentally found by infrared spectrum or computed by normal modes analysis so we want just to have the density um, of the of the bus i use letter v for vibrational dose but it can be b more b dose for bus density of states dose as function of uh, omega minus nu new k and then the it will it will be i need to do black otherwise it will be not seen on the uh, recording and then the coupling we need to monitor we need to track the fact that coupling uh, also does uh, depend so instead of index k we can tell that uh, it is g of uh, omega minus nu k any objections about this transition from summation to integration yes no okay no one no one protests okay so um i probably will rewrite this last full expression by just plugging uh, additional terms into this line to save uh, space and time DDT, OST, one H bar squared, integral TI, T, DT prime. Then we have a replacement of summation by integration. We do have coupling. And then we have the remaining terms sigma plus rho T prime sigma minus uh expected value of quanta which also de will depend on the frequency omega minus nu k plus one and then a uh, most important term uh e to the power i t 
C minus T prime times omega minus omega K. Um, what is the price? We, each term does depend on the integration variable, right? So we have this detuning here, there, there, and there. So um, next assumption. In some sense, the whole course can be uh, renamed as a list of assumptions. Um, it is assumed that everything except the sensitive exponential will be quite constant or slowly varying function in the vicinity of zero. Therefore, one is taking this integral and placing it right into there, assuming that the rest of the terms do not care. So if delta is uh, close to zero, it is, it is okay. Let's uh, keep focus on, on this panel and uh, I'll start uh, writing on the, on the other one. GDT rho s t minus h bar squared. And then I list all things that are not changed. V um, integral from initial time to t, dt prime, and then things that didn't change. V dos omega minus nu k, which will take later evaluated at, at zero. Um, coupling constant omega minus nu k squared. Probably we already agreed to call it delta. Quantum operators. And then, uh, yeah, this uh, number of quanta Plus one, and then the integral itself. Integral minus delta plus delta d omega minus nu k e to the power uh, i t minus t prime omega minus nu k. So to make power of exponential okay. okay to make the power of exponential and the integration variable equal to each other, we need to multiply integration variable by the missing factors and then divide to uh, practice mathematical liberty, right? So D i t minus t prime omega minus nu k divided by i t minus t prime i t minus t prime omega minus nu k. So uh, integral of exponential is exponential. Right? No one doubts. And then uh, as a price, we have the factor one over i t minus t prime up front.
I better double check this cheat sheet before I do a uh, very serious mistake. Once I was looking for souvenirs in the airport and they were uh, selling the piece of rubber to uh, a razor for a pencil, but it was substantially bigger than usual and for very big mistakes. <laughs> No errors yet, it was just, but it, it, it's, it's always good to be alert. Um, and then we do have uh, this exponential that we need to evaluate uh, at uh, positive and uh, negative uh, limits, right? So, um, I T minus T prime delta minus E I T minus T prime minus delta. Uh, catch me if you can. All, all good. No errors. Now, um, if I put number two here and number two there, uh, what do I get from our old body Euler? If two imaginary exponentials are subtracted and divided by, by two i, get sine. we get a sine. So sine of uh, t minus t prime times delta divided by t minus t prime. How does this function look like? If we um, okay. right. Well, so if time uh, equals if if uh, time is close to zero, then sine is uh, just t minus t prime delta, first order Taylor expansion. And then it will be divided one by another will be delta. So at zero time, it, it's just delta, right? And then it will be oscillating and uh, declining at the same time. If you have t minus t prime on the, on the axis. Yeah, it was um, nothing wrong in the math. I was... Uh, lying a little bit in the promises before doing this operation. It came out to be selective in time rather than in frequency. So maximal delta, and then it drops and oscillates, drops and oscillates, right? And uh, this is called a sync uh, function, S, I, and C of uh, t minus t prime times delta. And um, this is a very good approximation uh, for uh, delta function to delta of t minus t prime. So when the um, this sync function tells that t prime here can be taken equal to uh, t in there. Um, to do it rigorously, we are going to replace result of this integral by delta function, and then this delta, uh, Dirac delta, and uh, integral over time, integral d 
T prime over T times delta T minus T prime. We'll do the same job as uh, snake and rabbit, right? So we will get rid of both delta function and integral, but as a result, we will replace each T prime to T. Okay. Agreed, right? Okay. So after you agree with on, on this, I'm going to erase this uh, caucus 101 exercise and just continue the top line. So DDT row S of T minus one H bar squared. So um, initial time doesn't matter because it didn't uh, play any role because uh, density of the bath is not changing over time. The only important thing that uh, we will set up T prime equals to T and we get rid of the, of the integral. So we put, we still have the density uh, at evaluated where, where they are resonant. We take the uh, coupling when they are in, in resonance squared. We do not have any change uh, in the quantum operator, but it is really pleasant and important that we take the system density matrix at time t instead of t prime. So I, I failed to announce it ahead, but we get a major achievements from no non-local um, equation with memory. We came to time local equation, which is something that uh, numerical propagation uh, loves. So it is something that one can go forward, right? That's it. And uh, we already consumed delta function uh, in, in here. And there will be plus seven terms of, uh, of the same na nature. Okay. So um, we are, um at number eight and then for 20 minutes i need to cover 10 10 points so not t prime it's t right most important thing t here and there same same time All things in the box um, uh, times and uh, one shouldn't forget the number of quantum. It's a uh, uh, major goal of all our efforts and uh, uh, last four four meetings. So. Uh, all things in, in the box uh, later can be denoted by one symbol or maybe two symbols to simplify. And the only non-trivial things are this sigma plus, sigma minus. So uh, for the staying within time uh, limits, I'm going to uh, practice matrix element of, the, um, of this term. And then, uh, wait, then I will try to bring in additional terms which uh, pop up in, in, the, in the consideration. So if we do have 
ground and excited state. Then going from ground to excited, it is uh, pseudo spin sigma plus. Instead of regular spin, we do not have h bar uh, over two. Right? And for sigma minus, uh, we have going from excited to to the ground. Density matrix can be expressed as a row GG plus row uh, GE. Plus row EE. -E. So we, we can write down, um, let's call uh, this term as uh, minus gamma over two and plus times n plus one with the short notation. So uh, we can do this general uh, notation for applied for density matrix here and there. And then we would need the conversion from more abstract form to equations of motion for, for these expansion coefficients for from density operator to the density matrix. And we can do it just by taking matrix elements of this equation of motion. Is it okay? Okay. So um, we will put G and G from left and right to each term to find uh, equation of motion for rho GG. You're following? So rho uh, DDT, rho GG. So um, I'm not writing a long details on the left part because by applying uh, Brian Cat to this operator from left and right, it will give zero values for uh, each of these terms, and uh, it will give one from G and G, and we'll have left only rho GG. Okay, so uh, continuing minus gamma two and plus one. Um, then I'm just plugging in expressions for raising, lowering, and, and density matrix. So sigma plus is uh, E G. Density matrix will be the whole stuff in there. I will carefully rewrite it. And sigma minus will be uh, E G. I suggest a quick change on, on the fly. Let's apply it to uh, excited. Otherwise, we will have correct but uh, trivial result. 
because for the ground there, uh, there will be uh, zero contribution from from this term okay uh, then you have matrix elements e e there and uh, in the middle you have uh, gg row gg g e row g e e g row e g e e row e e so we will have convolution of Brian Kett. Uh, this E times E will give one. This E and E will, will give also one. Then uh, ground and excited with this one will cancel this term because E and G are orthogonal. This term will cancel. Then this ground with this excited you also cancel, and this ground or this ground with this excited you also cancel. So as a result, we are getting a term for time evolution d dt rho. E E minus gamma over two and plus one, which is a thermal factor. And then we have the only non-zero term uh, rho G G. So um There are something I'm, I'm not sure about this one. Probably um, careful processing, it shouldn't be here. But the main idea, but by going through this protocol, one would get terms for time evolution of the elements of, of density metrics, depending on time evolution of elements of other elements of density metrics. And uh, we will have transitions between population to population. The intensity of transition will depend on the density of uh, bath modes, interaction with the bath, and number of quanta in the bath mode. So this is the main idea. And uh, to have it practically uh, correct, one would need to carefully process all seven terms and uh, uh, get the the whole equation the whole equation of motion for density metrics or or uh, master equation for density metrics elements um, in the given time that uh, because we want to finish in 10 minutes uh, i will do a little cheating i'll show a screenshots from uh, previous year which is probably much less uh, helpful than discussing and writing, but then there will be guarantee that we will finish uh, in time. Okay, so um, the, let's focus on the center, I'll just show something. Or, oh, it is screen sharing, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, I have it focused on the screen so you can point at things if people are looking at the radio. Okay, yeah, that, that's really great. Okay. 
So um, I'm repeating the same shortcoming that I always criticize in the textbooks. Uh, no textbooks show the complete story. They show only initial and final uh, stage and then tell that uh, just spend another two weeks and, and go from line A to line B. So we did explore the term with uh, sigma plus sigma minus, right? And it is only one of the eight. There are additional terms. And if we carefully import the outcome of our previous meeting and process each of the terms the same way as uh, I was trying to do, to do today, then we will have an equation of motion for density operator with eight terms. Two of the terms will be coinciding, uh, like two, two pairs. Uh, the sigma plus sigma minus and sigma minus sigma plus with rho uh, inside. Other terms will be all possible permutations of sigma minus sigma plus and, and rho. But all of them will be local. All of them will be dependent on the uh, density, reduced density matrix of the system at time t. So um, this uh, half of the terms will be um, multiplied by factor n, number of quantum in the, in the resonant bath mode. Half of the, and it should be n, not n plus one in this one. So I, I, feel, I see the correction to what we derived. Um, so both have negative factor, same as minus one over h bar squared. Um, and half of them are multiplied by number of quanta, half of them multiplied of number of quanta plus one. Those that are multiplied by number of quanta plus one correspond to release of energy from system to the bus. Those that multiplied by uh, N correspond to absorbing energy from bus to the system. Now, uh, is it possible for a human to memorize all these eight terms? Uh, maybe yes, not for me. I, I'm not able to memorize them, but it is possible to combine them in a form that potentially is more memorizable. So uh, if one looks uh, here, um, the pairs of terms, uh, this one and one from the middle, the one in the middle and, and this one, they can be uh, obtained from each other as the um, commutations between the uh, density matrix and sigma plus sigma minus operators. So um, here, this equation has only four terms and there is a chance that some uh, bright brains can memorize it. So um, there is a, density matrix with uh, resident lowering, the another operator is away by, by comma, and um, the, by going from emission to absorption, one just flips the order of uh, plus and minus. So if one performs the same operation as we already completed for one term, if we uh, apply this uh, um, extraction of the matrix elements. If you, if you reproduce this operator equation in a specific basis, in the basis of uh, uh, grounded excited state, then one can process each of those uh, eight terms carefully and uh, arrive to the equations that you keep much fewer amount of terms if we neglect coherences. So if in our exercise for matrix elements, we do not consider off diagonal elements, uh, E, G, and G, E, if you look on the populations, we find that set of equations is self-contained. It never applies to off diagonal elements. We see only repopulation. And the equation looks uh, 
uh, as system of differential equations with linear with, with constant coefficients only two equations for uh, populations of ground and excited and we do have the um, transition from excited to ground which has a higher intensity and from uh, ground to excited which has lower intensity so it is exactly the equation that we practiced yesterday in the lab um derivation today is a little below standard but you see at least the path how to arrive to it right and uh, some properties is that uh, uh, summation of the ground and excited populations is one and the uh, um, derivation of the summations is, is zero so it, it is a, it gives way to solve uh, some uh, to find some practical solutions another important thing is to explore so-called uh, steady state so in case just for simplicity let's assume that we do have the bath in the absolute zero kelvin so there are no uh, there, is, there is there is only relaxation and there is no uh, warming up of the electronic system then our system of equation has only this uh, emission terms uh, minus gamma for emission from excited and uh, plus gamma for uh, getting population back into the ground state um, steady state which means time derivative is set to zero and then one can uh, solve uh, this system of, of linear equations and uh, find out that in the steady state or which is equivalent to time equals to zero the excited state will be zero ground state will be one okay. if one repeats this uh, steady state exploration at a situation when temperature is above zero when we have the transitions uh, up and down uh, uh, being non-modulated uh, <clears throat> by value of temperature then uh, the ratio of uh, transitions up and down uh, correspond to the ratio of n to n plus one and one can find one can uh, this uh, ratio of two of the uh, Bose-Einstein distribution for n Bose-Einstein of distribution for n plus one here one can put this uh, term out of the out of the brackets and then through cancellation of uh, of of two uh, terms one uh, can arrive that the ratio of transitions up uh, and down um will be um just both one factor hmm. okay we are done 4 p.m so <laughs> meeting is done uh i'll try to share what we did today and uh maybe the recording from previous year when the timing was a little better so the first part went quicker and there was a, a little more uh, focus on the last part discussing this uh, detailed balance but uh, with a little pushing pedal to the metal at the, at the last 10 minutes we achieved to the goal we arrived to a system of, of equations that gives uh, the uh, the system of equations that models how the quantum state approaches thermal equilibrium through interaction with the bus. So, uh, looking forward to see your little uh, contributions that are remaining for for the class. Mostly the presentations in a, in a week from now. Um, I did reserve the uh, bigger seminar room at the same time as as we typically meet at two two p.m. Does it uh, match your schedule? 
for everyone. So if anyone uh, is un uncomfortable, it's easy to reschedule. I think majority of the classes are, are done by this time and we, we, we have plenty of opportunities. I just decided that we have a custom to meet at, at two. So let's meet at two next uh, week. Sending slides ahead of time is uh, much appreciated by the midnight so I can maybe look over prepare, condense them on the, on the same computer so that we, we go over them quicker. Many thanks for accompanying me and each other on this uh, long road. Uh, didactic part of the class is done and looking forward to meet you on uh, other occasions. <laughs> I don't know. People want to be like, you know, you can go down every time and then you're probably wise. Yes, but I think you need to do it tomorrow.